<laughs> right then folks, today uh, you join us on Kingsby Water Park and we're on Millpool to run you through my sort of tackle tips and tactics on presenting for tension bream on a weedy venue. Hopefully we'll have a few. That's nodding its head a bit, Ty. Mind you, I had this the other day when I was fishing with Paul. And I'm not joking yet. I had egg on my face. I had a bream, take me to the clip. I unclipped. And it was beasting me. I mean, it was a nice bream, but bream taking me to the clip. Fishing lovely balanced tackle. I've got my pound and a half omegas today. I'm only fishing six pound hook link, so I don't want broomsticks. Feels a nice fish. <laughs> the feeder's rolled behind its fin. Go on, in the net. Well, that's the first one. Hopefully, a few more. They're still a bit spawny, aren't they? So, this is the first one. The lively, uh, the lively male that uh, gave me a little bit of a run around. They've not long spawned, so I think they're a little bit feisty still, but still take those all day long. So first things first, on weedy waters, you need to try and find somewhere that you're gonna present your bait on nicely. So you get your lead. Little tip, I've got my bopper, my bopper braid. I've put a big loop in that, and then I've put a little tag end loop so I can quickly change. I'm gonna just pass that lead on. Open the big loop up, put that over the lead and pull it down. And as you can see, the little loop is just forming a tag end. So when I want to change to my casting rake, I'll just pull that and it gives, instead of picking, unpicking the knot, which is just an absolute pain in the backside, just pulls off. It's like a quick change, really handy. Little tip that I don't see many other people do, to be honest. It's uh, something that you pick up off the carp, lads. So I'm going to cast that out. I'm going to have a little look around and just feel for a drop. If you're on weed, it'll be, it'll be really soft and cushioned. I'm looking for a firm bit of a thump. It is a weedy lake and the weed's properly up now. So I'm gonna be fishing on weed wherever I fish really. So I'm, I'm just feeling for a, a firmer drop. So it's low lying weed, somewhere I can clean. So I've had a lead about and I found a nice little area with what feels like a little low lying bit of weed probably just silkweed. I'll put the casting rake on in a minute, make sure it's really clean, and I'll be able to see what sort of weed I'm fishing over then. But I've, I've clipped up, I've got my horizon marker. I'm just gonna have another flick out, make sure, or, or find out how big the spot is. So I've gone to the tree to the side of the spot, and that's still pretty clean. So I'm just gonna drag it a rod length, and I'm just going into the weed again then. Because that all feels pretty nice to be fair. What I'm going to do now is put my casting rake on just to see what sort of weed I'm going to fish over. And at, if it's just silk weed, like a low lying weed, I'll still fish my sort of four to five inch hook links. But Canadian, I want to just slightly lengthen that just to make sure I'm presented. So I want that to get down to the bottom now. I've got a nice drop and I want to drag this to clean that bottom up. It's not a massive, massive casting rag, four ounce. It's got a few, it's got four prongs on it. Hopefully it does two things. It clears your spot for presentation. And when tench fishing, it stirs all the naturals up as well. So as you can see, that's just sort of a low line silk weed there. Bit of detritus in there, but that's that's nothing too too severe to fish over. Pretty happy with that. Probably gonna have 10 casts with the casting rake. Just stir it up and make sure it's really polished and then get some bait in. Not 
Why would cast? Say that. No, look for him now, is that? Fill that down to the bottom. When you're cleaning the spot, it's important to keep the rub tip low. Because what you want to be doing is getting those prongs to stay down and digging into the weed. What you don't want, if, if you lift your rub tip, you're almost lifting the lead out of the weed. So keep it nice and low and just, just drag it steadily. You're trying to collect as much as you can on that lead. Just for the first sort of rod length or two rod lengths, that's really pulled in now. So I've, I've cleared the area where it's landing and I've just pulled into a bit, a little bit closer. Yeah, that's properly pulled in. There we go. And then once you're happy you've got enough weed on the lead, then you can lift it up. Gravel in that. So I've just mixed my initial feed together. Micro pellet, so they're the, the F1 micro pellet. There are a few four mil halibut pellets from Sonyu, the hemp and corn, and an even measure of casters. Just something to put a nice sort of carpet down. Something that's not gonna sink into any weed that's left, but just scatter itself over the top. I'm not gonna put loads of bait in. I just want sort of four to five spoms at first, I think, just to see, fill my way into the session. I don't wanna put loads in and then regret it. There's not loads of fish in here. So I'm gonna fish for a bite first. Scars to prove it. So I found my fishing spot. Uh, I'm going to go around the distance sticks, count my wraps so I know exactly how far I need to be putting my fishing rods. Just concentrating because it's um oh it's doing actually it feels heavy but I think it's like trying to bore into the <laughs> like it's like dragging itself along the bottom. But yeah, fish number two, we haven't been fishing long either. Ideal conditions just goes to show the, the difference in a few weeks. Me and Ty came to do this video about I'd say about a month ago and it was tough, I had one fall off. And uh, I came back last week, as you'll see, a few clips. And uh, I had seven bream in a morning section, with the biggest being double figures. So I thought we'd have a little return. It's nice fun on the pound nards, like they, they actually look, they have a little go back. Whether it's the the male's been a bit feisty because it's not long after spawn time. I mean, that's a decent fish, isn't it, really? <laughs> and then let the other one out then. Yeah. He's bigger, that one. Wicked. So there's the second one, a little bit bigger than the first. First was a, a, a lively male. 
but um, great, great to see the, the tactics are working. We found that little clear spot, put a little bit of bait out. I might have to top up now because we haven't been fishing long and we've had two already. Right, I'm just going to run you through the tackle that I've, uh, I've used today to put those bream on the bank. Um, helicopter systems are fantastic for weedy venues. You've got all your weight on the end of the line and your, line, your hook bait can just nestle down on top of... We have prepared the spot um, with the casting rake, so hopefully there's not too much weed still out there. But that's a five inch hook link on the new heli beads and they just come on a nice little, little ring that you pass through on the line, like a float stop so easy to use they're safe because they've got a tapered end so that the swivel can literally just come off if a if a weed should uh, a fish should weed you up and then i've got a turbo bead on the end and that just determines the fact that i can change my my feeder size at the minute i've got a 40 gram bullet feeder on cast fantastically and it's just a really simple setup. oh i've got 10 pound barber line as my main line uh, a size 10 all rounder and I've now I did start on six pound smoke shield but I've stepped up to eight because I don't want to hook a big tent weed me up and uh, and lose it so and that is that is as simple as it is I've got my new pound and a half omega rod with a six thousand bait runner simple fishing Well, at last, another pickup. Gone quiet and then suddenly out of the blue. Another bite. It's, um, it is getting to that time of the evening now though, where you would expect the fish to start feeding properly. We've actually um, witnessed like, <laughs> the world's biggest hatch of, I don't know what the flies are, but we've actually seen fish taking them off the top. We think they were bream. They look very much like bream. So whether they've just come in, up in the water to feed on the naturals, and then they finally just, one's dropped back down and had a bit of a feed. It's the reason for the softer rods as well. Just that pan and a half test curve, cushions those head shakes. Sometimes you just nick those bream. little bit of skin. It just shows you keep at it on these weedy venues, there's fish still there to be had. Lovely jubbly. So bait wise, I've just gone down a really simple approach again. As I've showed you earlier when I, I, I primed the swim, I've got the F1 micro pellet, I've got four mil halibut pellets, caster, because what, what doesn't love a caster? Crunchy caster, I'm, oh, I am still hoping that the tent's gonna turn up at some point. Fantastic bait for both tench and bream. Sweet corn and hemp. Gives you great att attraction. They're small items. Keep those tents grubbing around and the bream on the area until they come across your hook bait. And in the feeder, I've got 50-50 of Powerscopex and F1 Dark. There is a, a small pole pot about two big handfuls of micro pellets in my feeder mix as well. And what I'll do is I've got a spare bait tub where I will 
I'll put a couple of handfuls of ground bait in and I will make separate batches if I want more particles in or I might go for a couple of wet mixes of ground bait, put a bit of cloud in. That's it really. That's, that's my bait approach and on the, on the hook, on the hair I should say, 10 mil bandum wafters, power scope X again, bait booster, that goes in my ground bait and all I've done is put a bit of my life. My labels come off. <laughs> that's krill and squid haze, that is. And that's just boosted my hook bait. So as you saw, when I um when I when I prepped the swim, I raked it and I put five spums in of a mixture of the bait. I had a few fish early on and I was getting plenty of liners, so I thought they're probably gonna clear me out. What I'll do is I'll just put another exploratory two spums in. And I'll do that after if I have two or three fish. Or if the line has stopped, you feel like the fish have cleaned you out and then moved off. Just top back up with another two or three spoms and then hopefully they'll move back in. And then I'll, I'll just been, I top up as a, a re, I've been recasting every sort of half hour, which again, just running the ground bait through the feeder. Oh yeah, we were just trying to film an outro. And um, it, those bream have properly rocked back up on us now. We've had three in sort of, well, there's two in the net. So I'll literally reach up the rod and it goes. It's really strange how they just drifted off us. We caught really quick and then nothing for, got to be three and a half hours. And then uh, they've just dropped back onto us. But lovely fishing. This will be number six. No, oh, number seven as, I think. Might have been a liner, might have been a fish. That's the final fish of the session. We've just had three quick fish, typical bream fishing. They've moved off us and then uh, and then dropped back on the bait. Three fish in sort of 25 minutes. And a lovely stamper fish at that. It just shows those weedy, weedy venues. You put all the, the right sort of aspects in, into place with the bait and clearing a spot. The rewards are there to be had. Hopefully you've took some uh, hints and tips on my approach to weedy waters. Um, like and subscribe. Hopefully see you on the next video.